Hello everyone. First of all, I really wanted to thank you all who have left wonderful comments, encouraging comments in regards to my last video. Whether it was the English version, the French version, or the Spanish version. And I'm referring to the video where I revealed an email that I've received recently from my brother who has been shunning me for the past 10 plus years. And if you haven't seen this video and wanted to see it, just click on the link down below and you'll be able to see that video and what I'm talking about. And the reason why I wanted to make this video today was also inspired by a comment, not a mean comment, but the comment of someone who apparently thinks that what the Watchtower wants you to believe that they are teaching their members in regards to how to treat their family members who have left the religion or who were disfellowshipped and how those members actually treat their family members who have left the religion for whatever reason, those things are two very, very different things. But this person, as I'm going to show you, I'm going to read his comment along with you, you'll see how this person doesn't get it and he thinks for whatever reason that what the Watchtower officially teaches is how it goes. But we know ex Jehovah's Witnesses that it's not the case. And to prove that to you, I'm going to show you some articles from the Watchtower. I'm going to show you some clips from videos and assemblies. And I'm going to show you also testimonies. And I'm going to show you everything that I need to show you to prove to you that what the Watchtower teaches or officially teaches or wants you to believe they teach their members is one thing and how things really happen it's another thing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's see what this year 1914 says here in his comment. You should write a formal letter of compliance to the nearest branch office, providing your brother's name, address, phone, and congregation. The JW rep clearly told you that family bonds, duties, and relationships continue, so your brother should have contacted you. Turn him in to the branch and see what they do. They should counsel him. You should write to the branch office and give your brother's name, address, and phone number. Well, for your information, my dear friend, I do not have my brother's address and phone number. And it's not for lack of searching, by the way. Actually, I came to the conclusion that the only way I could get my brother's email, my brother's address, and my brother's phone number is by hiring a private investigator. So this is the part that you don't seem to realize. You don't seem to realize that shunning means shunning. It means that you are as good as dead. So it means that whatever your family member who is a Jehovah's Witness does or does not do, you do not know. And as far as contacting the branch office to let them know whatever I feel, whatever my brother is doing to me, do you think, do you really think they care? And I'm not making fun of you here, but I'm telling you and every one that is thinking like you, what you feel, how your family member or family members make you feel as Jehovah's Witnesses, the branch office doesn't care. They don't care at all. So I would not waste my time to write those guys to tell them anything. And if you watch the whole video, you've noticed that I called them, right? with a very specific question. 
And who did I speak with? A robot. That's why I called the guy a robot, because it was as if I was speaking to a robot, not a human being. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are trained to be more robots than human beings. So after I replied, this is what he says. I disagree. They have said frequently that family obligations continue. Your brothers ignore that admonition. That's his fault or perhaps his misunderstanding. I would still encourage you to write a letter of complaint about your brother's actions so it's on record and may prove therapeutic to you. So about me needing therapy or being therapeutic to me to write to the branch office, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that wouldn't be therapeutic at all. As a matter of fact, I do not need therapy at this point, okay? I've made my peace with the fact that my brother is shunning me for now over 10 years. I've made my peace with the fact that I did not know when my mother died, that I've learned it four months after the facts, four years, four and a half years ago. And I made my peace with the fact that, again, I was not aware when my aunt died almost two years ago. So, and I'm not the one anymore in a cult. He is. My brother is. So, if one of the two needs therapy, <laughs> we know which one needs therapy. Plus, you may not know that, but I am a coach. And I'm kind of helping people who need therapy. And I'm not saying that I do not need anything. I'm not saying that. But as a coach, as a matter of fact, I give myself a therapy every time that I have a session with a client. So I get a lot of therapy. Okay? So, no, I'm not trying to boast here, but I do not need therapy at this point. My brother does. And the fact that you uh, insist on thinking, on believing that the Watchtower teaches differently than what Jehovah's Witnesses actually do when it comes to treating their family members who are disfellowshipped, well, that's what you think because that's what the Watchtower wants you to think, but this is not the case. This is not what happens in real life. So, without further ado, let's dig into it. If you go on jw.org and look for this brochure here, Keep Yourselves in God's Love, and then look for this title, how to treat a disfellowshipped person. If you look down here, they are actually quoting themselves. The watchtower is quoting itself. And it's very clear here. Look what it says. The watchtower of September 15, 1981, page 25, stated, A simple hello to someone can be the first step that develops into a conversation and maybe even a friendship. Would we want to take that first step with a disfellowship person? Then if you look down at the last paragraph on this page, it says, In other cases, the disfellowshipped relative may be living outside the immediate family circle and home. Although there might be a need for limited contact on some rare occasion to care for a necessary family matter, any such contact should be kept to a minimum. Loyal Christian family members do not look for excuses to have dealings with a disfellowshipped relative not living at home. As you can see here, it says that you should keep any contact with a family member that doesn't live 
at home to a minimum. Now, what is a minimum? How do you interpret what a minimum is? You see, that's what I was trying to explain that Jehovah's Witness at Bethel two weeks ago when I called. When you teach a cultish teaching such as this one, that you should not even speak to a family member who doesn't live at home, that you should keep any contact with them to a minimum, then it is subject to interpretation. And as in any group of people, especially in a cult, you are going to have some that are more fanatics than others. And the most fanatic ones are going to take that word minimum to a maximum. They are going to take that word minimum contact to an extreme. And my brother is not the only one. As you will see, many, many other Jehovah's Witnesses have taken that word to an extreme. Jehovah's Witnesses actually practice a very severe form of shunning, which is directed at members who are disfellowshipped or excommunicated and those who officially disassociate themselves. This includes family and even children. Now you can go to the website, thejwvictims.org, and click on the shunning category and you can get more details about that. Witnesses will say that this shunning is done to keep the congregation clean as they cannot have unrepentant sinners in their midst. However, according to a discourse given during the 2013 summer conventions, this is also done as a means of convincing these shunned ones to return to the congregation, which is actually a form of emotional blackmail. It's also often done for very selfish reasons. As the meeting progressed, with Mr. Wall, the elders came to the decision that Mr. Wall was not sufficiently repentant for his disgraceful conduct, and the congregation elders took the decision to disfellowship him. And even though this video is not about disfellowshipping, but about shunning, I think it's worth it to mention why someone can be disfellowshipped. Interestingly, if you go on JW.org, the study edition of April 2015, you find this article, Why This Fellowshipping is a Loving Provision. And if you look here, the first subheading, they tell you two factors, that there are two factors that lead to this fellowshipping. Two factors must coincide result in the disfellowshipping of one of Jehovah's Witnesses. First, a baptized witness commits a serious sin. And second, he does not repent of his sin. This is a lie. It's a lie because at the very least, it's not complete at all. First of all, according to elders... Who told me that, okay? If someone committed the same sin, let's say the first time he committed a sin and the elders judged that he was repentant, they excused him. They did not disfellowship him or her. If they come back three months later, for example, having committed the same sin again, and still being repentant again, they will be this time disfellowshipped. And second, if you happen to disagree with any of the doctrines of the Watchtower and open your mouth about it, let's say start telling other Jehovah's Witnesses, you will be accused of apostasy and you will be disfellowshipped. So we see here in this list, in the very short list that they are giving the reader, they are forgetting of about two other ways that you can get disfellowship for. As a matter of fact, I think it's worth mentioning, 
if you happen to have a YouTube channel telling the truth about the Watchtower or telling about the lies of the Watchtower, even though you have not said anything to anyone in your congregation, but let's say someone finds out, an elder finds out, or someone in your congregation finds out and tell the elders, you will be called to a judicial committee meeting, at the end of which you will be disfellowshipped for apostasy. If you are new watching videos on YouTube and don't know that this exists, I'm going to link a couple of such recorded judicial committee where the Jehovah's Witness was disfellowshipped for that for having started opening their mouth online about the Watchtower. As the meeting progressed with Mr. Wall, the elders came to the decision that Mr. Wall was not sufficiently repentant for his disgraceful conduct, and the congregation elders took the decision to disfellowship him. That word is used by Jehovah's Witnesses. They, Jehovah's Witnesses don't use the word shun or shunning, they refer to it as disfellowship, disfellowshipping, disfellowshipped, because that really gives the, the, the sense of what's taking place within this particular religious community. Disfellowship literally means no further spiritual fellowship with the, with the individual. Mom and Dad saw that they needed to be loyal, just like Aaron. They loved me and wanted me to come back to Jehovah. I tried to contact them, I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I missed being with my family. And they thought about reaching out to me. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. As far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. As far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. Hello, Jessica. I am 93 years old. I will be 94 in January and my eyesight is going bad. I'd love to see you before I lose my eyesight. Remember, you're the granddaughter that I took care of ever since you was born. And I love you. I still love you. And I would love to see you. Would you please call me or come by to see me? I'd love to see you, but I uh, I don't know what else to do. I've called you, and I don't. You hung up on me, and that wasn't very nice. So if you will come by or call me, I'd love to see you. After all, I took care of you ever since you was born. And uh, other people are very nice to me, except Jehovah's Witnesses. As far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. Il y a un jour où j'appelle mes parents pour leur dire que j'ai envie d'aller les voir, et mes parents me disent, Marie-Laure, tu es morte pour nous. Je ne pensais pas que des parents puissent dire quelque chose d'aussi fort. Ça, c'est extrêmement choquant. Ça, ça, je, j'ai ressenti un, je me suis, pour elle, j'ai ressenti un sentiment d'injustice. Euh, c'est, enfin, comment des parents peuvent dire ça à leur propre enfant, enfin, à la chair de leur chair À quel point c'est là où on prend conscience du, de, de, du filtre en fait que la secte met, euh, enfin, met dans la tête des gens. C'est, 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 c'est sidérant. I had always told her kids, well, I told her kids that I would die for you, I love you, would die for you, but if you ever leave Jehovah, I wouldn't be there. And they knew that we wouldn't waver on this. But sad to say, and as hard as it was, we had to cut off all association. 
as far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. As you can see, what the Watchtower wants you to believe about their shunning practices and what really happens are two completely different things.